hello everybody. My name is, uh, as introduced, I'm uh, Anders Schoenel. I would like to uh, thank initially, uh, of course, the organizers uh, and you guys for uh, listening to me and having me doing this presentation. I'll be talking about uh, how a classification society looks at the digitalization and how we can support the industry in uh, not only optimization, but also how to comply. I'm sure you uh, are familiar with Lloyd's Register. We have been around for almost 260 years. Uh, we are a foundation, which means that we have no shareholders that we owe any dividends to. And ever since this uh, start in uh, Docklands, just outside of London, we have been committed to be the masters of risk. We started out in the marine, of course, in that industry, but we are also spread and are active in many other uh, industries. But today, we are about to speak about our commitment to the digitalization and what we do in that area. We have a running project, a sort of a family name for all our di digitalization services and innovations we called Aurora. And it's just like the name suggests, it's a very colorful dawn for the industry. And that may be especially true here in the Nordics, considering our levels of uh, technology innovation, but also the light of the Nordics. I'm thinking about Norgen, uh, Aurora Borealis. As you can see, we have uh, now rallied quite a lot of people, quite a team. Almost 200 people are uh, committed to the, the digital uh, development in Lloyd's Register. We have teams spread out all over the world in various industries. And we also have pure research initiatives together with universities and in-house. Today, I'm going to speak of three of these innovation uh, initiatives namely the safety scanner, maintenance analytics, and condition-based maintenance, which is not to be confused with condition-based monitoring, which is very close by, but not really the same thing. So let's plunge into that. Firstly, I'd like to speak to you about the safety scanner. It's really about how to, uh, how to support and, and commit to an even stronger safety culture and do b better business outcomes. When we have spoken to our clients, uh, listened to the researchers and other uh, knowledgeable people, we found out that 50 to 80 percent of work-related accidents actually are human error or related to the same. Obviously, that would have a great impact on uh, the business, on its reputation, on the operations and productivity, and eventually, of course, also on uh, the revenue the company is set out to uh, acquire. We know nowadays that HSE regulation is very much regulated, and it's a must-have for many companies, and most companies, if they want to trade internationally. We also learn, when speaking to the shipping companies, that many HSE departments are undermanned, and underfunded and pretty much getting into action when something, hit, uh, something bad happens. So there's a challenge, of course, and, and uh, it's really difficult for an HSE department, which may be undermanned or underfunded, to operate on, a, uh, on only a rear view mirror outlook, trying to get the, the biggest safety picture, looking at behaviors, when and, and where something happened, and to, to foresee and mitigate the upcoming risk, because they are purely committed to the firefighting then and there. It means many organizations are actually having great challenges to understand all of the safety data, even though they may have it, but how to understand it. It's uh, challenging and, and, uh, to, get, to get and foresee the emerging risks and the safety 
issues at hand and in front of them. And of course, it's, it's uh, really difficult to assign mitigation strategies to prevent it happening again. We listened to this and we thought it could really be a, a good endeavor from our side as a classification society to support compliance with not only the HSE policy for the company, but also support the compliance to the ISM code. So this uh, is a, a digital project of ours to address this. Do we by chance have any DPAs or HSE officers in the audience? No? Okay. Imagine you were then responsible for, for the safety of a ship or of a, of a, a company, um, a shipping company and the ships, and you have, an, uh, have an, uh, a tool that could help you with identify patterns, hot spots and blind spots, rather than having a huge amount of uh, reports from each and every ship. That tool we set out to, to develop and support safety and operations managers with advanced text analytics. It's a natural language processing tool that's, uh, that, that, that is able to analyze a lot of reports, to find out patterns, to do uh, heat maps, and show that in an interactive uh, dashboard where you can run reports. So that's the main contribution to uh, the safety and uh, operations managers. And it's also extended to a little app where your employees can plug into the system and uh, report accidents, remisses, what have you, but also to get uh, alerts to, to the workforce. How does it work? Well, pretty simple. You, uh, you gather your data. You ingest it to the platform, and the, the platform is, is large registers then. We uh, structurize the data and we write it to the database uh, in cloud. There we employ these text analytics I told you about to extract the insights, and then you get a dashboard visualization. And what could that be? Well, you can see the near misses, and you can see observations made. You can gain from insights learning, and you can also have multi-labeling if you have uh, two different uh, occasions, issues at the same uh, incident, and which can be very important to have a review and suggestion on the hazard taxonomy, so you get it uh, labeled the right way, which is really important. This is not a commercial off-the-shelf tool. We would like to work with every uh, client which, with the, having these needs and uh, work, from, work a solution for each and, and, and every case. And this is one example of it. One of the clients we have uh, asked for uh, this application and we made a, a, a silo with data enrichment where we looked at the big data from uh, weather in, in the operations areas and, one, and what have you. We applied business intelligence for similar ships and organizations, and we did a quite a bit good piece of work on the workflow and the digitalization, including how to present this to those who were about to use it. And this is how such a dashboard could look like. Useful? Yes? No? Yes, thank you. He's also large, you can imagine that. Okay, so let's look into the next topic. Now we discussed the, 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 the human side of things, the safety for the, for the workplace, and now we are looking into uh, engineering, into uh, machinery, and maintenance, especially then, uh, and how to analyze, and what kind of use can you make from that. We know that the industry have a challenge. You know too, of course. It's pretty much around these unexpected failures that has an impact across all the enterprise, and especially in these three areas. We have uh, the operations side of things, who may 
due to unplanned downtime be forced to stop the business from having it running. And uh, the impact it can have on uh, time critical operations, of course. You will have the reliability where you may have a lot of data, but it's, it's too many issues, it's too many alarms, and it's too many faults reported. So do, you don't have the time to stop and understand what you actually are looking at and what is data telling you. So what about the reali reliability on the findings you make? And thirdly, you have the maintenance issue. If you're constantly fixing something that goes wrong, you're not predicting and preventing the next happening to occur. Again, we asked clients, we, we looked into uh, uh, research and, and their findings and the stats, and we note that business on average, they, they spend 80% of the time reacting to maintenance issues rather than preventing them. Then there is the ob obligatory um, uh, figure on how much you can save on preventing. I will leave that to anyone else more knowledgeable. But what's interesting, I find that in, in many companies, as much as 53%, we find they use one of these uh, maintenance software tools. Still, of these 53%, yet 52% add on a spreadsheet anyway. So we're not there yet when it comes to the digitalization. There's much more to do, I'd say. So we set out again then to, to uh, develop a, a series of uh, services. We, we like to call it internally for the LR All Assets. It's a sort of a, a wheel, the Deming's wheel, if you like. And uh, I'm about to discuss the maintenance analytics. But the other modules, it's the risk-based inspection, it's the maintenance optimization, and there's a condition-based maintenance tool. And we'll be also speaking a little about condition-based maintenance. So, and finally, we have uh, the prescriptive piece, and this could be the manual from the OEM, or it could be classification rules, for instance, when it comes to thickness and measurements. Maintenance analytics is really about an automated analysis of data from these modules, risk-based inspections, maintenance optimization, and condition-based maintenance. The core offering, it consists of these four. Benchmarking of assets um, based on the maintenance history and any other external databases, we may get access and uh, allowance to get into it. We look into the performance dashboard of the specific asset we are looking into and how has it uh, performed and how reliable was it the last couple of years. We pull out exactly when and where anomalies were observed and represent that on uh, another heat map to, for, uh, for our analyze and we confirm the failure modes if they are correctly headed. Here's uh, just a short uh, few words about a project we did together with a cruise liner company. They were interested in uh, our view and uh, would like to have some more information when it comes to how their maintenance operations were conducting. So we, we uh, analyzed two assets two ships for two pieces of equipment and put it together and give them the re recommendation in, in terms of statistical ana analytics developed to establish benchmark for their normal operations. Oops. And here's how this looked like. And those of you who were listening already to when I started, you will recognize it's pretty much the same graphic outlook. And it's, it's the very same platform we are using for both the safety scanner and for the, for the maintenance analytics, analytics. It gives you these kind of heat maps, and I don't know if, if you're able to read, but it clusters from, from words from the reports. And you have, uh, in this case, it must be hull integrity and stuff, because it's water ingress, water leakage, thickness diminishing, corrosion. Throughout 
tens, hundreds, thousands of reports. Then a few words also about condition-based maintenance. This is really about real-time information combined with industry-proven models and rules to identify uh, and prevent any, any failure. So it's a bit of supporting compliance as well. Again, the same wheel, you saw it before. There's another module, the real-time monitoring and prediction to prevent uh, failure. For this service, we teamed up with, with a knowledgeable company. Uh, it's called Augury. And together with them, we have provided with a solution that can connect the asset, analyze the data, diagnose and verify the issue, visualizing it, and then give the recommendations to those who have asked us to uh, implement this solution. And it's, uh, it consists of uh, hardware installations as well, sensors. And this is a sample uh, uh, installation we've made together with Augury. It's about vibration, temperature, and the magnetic fields sensoring they would like to have us to, to monitor. And it's all sent up in the cloud. Again, you get the dashboard where you can uh, draw your conclusions from and draw your reports. But this time, in difference from the others, it's in real time. You will see the alarms. You will not see the failures. Now you are ahead of things breaking down. We've done that together with Augury on, uh, give or take, 60,000 uh, installations, different kinds of um, sensing hardware installations, data infrastructure, implementing the, the diagnostics, and f furthermore giving uh, recommendations to our good clients. Yeah, I did well. One minute and 30 seconds. Uh, so, to conclude, these are just some of the in innovations we have been undertaking lately in the fields of uh, digitalization. There are really uh, close and visible links to class items, which these are not. But class items like condition-based monitoring on main engines, that's another topic. But this I have now shown you is, is how we intend to help the industry to support with compliance on rules, legislation, and best practice. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Anders Höfnell. Welcome. Uh, I, I was thinking about why, why you, as a classifical um, society, or, or classification society, are involved in providing digital services. Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I get that from time to time. Thank you. Uh, you, you may uh, ask yourself the question, why are we doing this as, a, as, as class? I mean, aren't there software providers that should do this? Are, are they not better at this than we are? And maybe they are. But if we didn't do this, how can we be masters of risk if we don't do the same investigations if we don't expose our solutions to the, to the real world and, and, and real ships and real people, we, we can't just simulate this. So we have to be involved in, in uh, undertaking such an enterprise and such an investigation uh, together with the industry. We cannot second guess what may happen to ships. We have to be there in real life. 